One of the things you're going to be seeing a lot in your homework will be the discussion of parallel and perpendicular lines. Uh, one of the things you need to remember about parallel lines is that these guys are coplanar lines. That means they occur on the same two-dimensional plane and they never intersect. They're going to have the same slopes and they're going to have different y-intercepts. So you see these guys looking like this. Sometimes you say they run in the same direction. Well, if this is line L and this is line K, then we would use this notation to say line L is parallel to line K. Okay, that's, that's pretty much it, right? So if you have a slope that is equal to 5 thirds, that means that a slope that's parallel to that would also have to be 5 thirds. That's it, nothing more. Perpendicular lines, well these guys are a slightly different class. These are lines that do intersect and they intersect to form right angles. Remember right angles are like those nice pretty corners that you like to you know adjust things with like, oh look, this is a right angle, love it. The thing we know about their slopes is that they are negative reciprocals of each other. Another way of saying that is that the product of their slopes is negative one. So, lines that are perpendicular will look like this. And a lot of times we draw this little square right here to denote that these guys are forming right angles. So if I say this is line L and this is line M, we'd say that line L is perpendicular to line M. Now if I say that the slope of a line, let's use this guy above, we said 5 thirds, right? Well, what would be the slope of a line perpendicular to that. Well, to be perpendicular, you're going to have the negative reciprocal, which means you take that fraction, you flip it over, and you change the sign. So the perpendicular slope is going to be 3 over 5, but now you change the sign, so it's negative. Now let's see how this affects these next couple equations. So if I want to be parallel to y equals 3x plus 8 and pass through this ordered pair, so parallel, let's look at this line right here. The slope of this line is 3. So what is going to be the slope of any line parallel to that? Well, we just said that for parallel lines, the slopes were the same. So any line parallel to that is going to have a slope of 3. So now you've got a slope and you've got a point that you go through. So based on the other videos we've seen in this section, we know that we can jump straight into this. y equals mx plus b. You know your slope. You know the x and y coordinates for a point that you're going through. You just don't know your b value. So you plug in what you know. My y value is 2. My slope is 3. And x is negative 9. And so we just go through the process of getting b by itself. You have this nice linear equation. You're going to add 27 on both sides to finish isolating b. And so we get that b is equal to 29. So we put these guys together. We put our slope and our b value together to form our equation y equals 3x plus 29. And that's really all there is to it. In all these problems we've seen so far, we've had to either identify the slope or the slope was given to us. So they didn't directly give us the slope. But since we knew we were parallel to this, we know that parallel slopes have the same, or they're exactly the same. So I use that with my point, and I find my b value. Now what if I change the word from parallel to perpendicular? If I want to be perpendicular to y equals 3x plus 8. Well, just like we had above, from here we know that my slope is 3, but I want to know what is the perpendicular slope. And so the perpendicular slope is going to take this guy, flip it over, and change the sign. So this is understood to be over 1. So the perpendicular slope is flip it over and change the sign. So my perpendicular slope is negative 1 third. So I've got my slope, I've got my point, so it's time to rock and roll with that slope-intercept form. 
So y equals mx plus b. Let's plug in everything that we know. We know that y is 2, my slope is negative 1 third, and x is negative 9. And I'm going to find out what b is. All right, so this is 2 equals. Now notice what happens here. This 3, this denominator, can reduce with the 9, and it goes in there three times. So now we don't have a fraction to worry about. But you do have to pay attention to your signs. Negative times negative is positive, and that's just 1 times 3, so that's 3. And when we get b by itself, we subtract 3 on both sides, and we end up with negative 1. If that's throwing you off by me not writing subtract 3 on both sides, then do that in your notes. Okay. So that's my slope, excuse me, that's my b value, that's my slope, and you put these guys together, so y equals negative one-third x minus one. And you can see a quick comparison between these two guys, how they have uh, negative reciprocals for slopes, as opposed to the problem we had above, where these guys have the exact same slope, and they have different y-intercepts. So that means they are parallel. And since negative 9, 2 is going to be a solution here, that's what we're looking for. The slopes here are negative reciprocals. You can plug in negative 9, and you're going to get out 2. So these two lines not only are they perpendicular, but that perpendicular line is going to go through that order pair, negative 9, 2.